All right, guys, and welcome back. Right, in today's episode, I want to take this C20XZ or C20 Lair or Voxel Red Top head and I want to give it an overhaul. So, what does that consist of then? So, I'm going to take every valve out and I'm going to reseat them. I'm going to basically grind them back in so they seal really well, and that's going to make the engine run better. I'm also going to replace all the valve stem oil seals and clean all the lifters out so there's no more tappity noises and just give the head a really good clean and a little bit of a pain make it look brand new again basically anyway this is what i've been up to since the last video so i started off by fitting the throttle body to the inlet manifold i used a brand new gasket so we can ensure it's going to get a really good seal we're going to have no turbo leaks once i've done that i fitted the breather um, and dipstick tube and this just literally bolts the front of the engine to a mate bolt and I used a new gasket as well, just to ensure it's not going to leak. I then moved on to the front of the engine and fitted the rear timing cover. The water pump, obviously I greased the seal up first just to make sure that it seals nicely. We don't want any leaks. I fitted the brand new timing belt guides and brand new tensioner. And then I moved back onto the front of the engine and fitted the front engine mount. Now this might have to come back off again, but I just I wanted to put it on to test fit it. So once I'd tightened the front engine mount, I realized I'd got to put the front crank seal in. Now I did have a new one. I reused the old one, my ARS. So I've taken the crank pulley back off and put the new seal back. So then I moved to the back of the engine and fit the plastic water tube and the rubber hose, which connects it to that and the inlet manifold. So that's where we are. Right, let's make a start on this head. One hour later. So, disaster, well, kind of anyway. I really wanted to get this head done today, and I wanted to get this head done in this video. However, I've come across a couple of problems. So, it all started out well. I started removing the valves from the head. Um, I took all the exhaust valves out to start off with, and I cleaned them all up on the wire wheel to make sure they're nice and clean, ready for grinding the valves in. And then I moved on to the head, started decoking the exhaust ports and just generally degreasing the whole thing cleaning it all out making it look really nice once i was happy with that i started cleaning up all the mating faces and like an idiot i should have done this first really but once i clean the um the cylinder head face up i put a set square across it just to make sure it's nice and true and it had a massive dip between one two of the cylinders now it's not that bad you could repair it with a skim but i wasn't happy with it so it needed skimming and i also noticed that loads of the exhaust studs have been um, repaired i use that term loosely because they are all at an angle so they've been helicoiled and whoever did it couldn't hold the drill very square so yeah i wasn't happy with that i wasn't happy with the head face which means that the head kind of needed to go away for machining um, and obviously because of the head studs being bent that's quite an involved job now um, so he to the rescue and we managed to find a reconditioned cylinder head for quite a reasonable price really and the seats and valves already been ground everything's been polished up cleaned been acid dipped comes with warranty 500 quid yeah you could say it's a lot of money but at least we know it's going to be a good head so this head it is salvageable, but we're not going to be using it on this project. So we're going to pull it in the parts pile and forget about it for now. Um, so we're going to have to wait a few days for the new head to come. Right, while I wait for the cylinder head to arrive, I'm going to fill these brand new engine mounts with polyurethane adhesive, just to stiffen them up and make it a bit of a sportier ride, shall we say. I've also started prepping the plug cover for paint. Now this was corroded and red. Um, I've used paint stripper, and if you want to see how I've done this, have a look at my other videos, I'll put a link to it now. So this is the stuff I'm using, polyurethane, PU18, high strength sealant and adhesive. I've already started doing it. I'm just filling the cavities basically. Simple as that. There we go. Beautiful. 
Right guys, very good news. The cylinder head has arrived. Now this has been about nine days coming, which means this video has been delayed, but it's here now, so I can pull it on the engine. Right, so as you can see, I've put dowels back in, I've cleaned this face again, I've got rid of all the oil, excess oil, etc. I've cleaned all the holes out, so it's ready to stick a head gasket on. So again, we're using Victor Ryan's gaskets. These are OE quality and very good. I've already put the cam seals in the end of the cams. So the gasket can only go one way. You need to make sure the oil gallery lines up there nicely. And that fits like that, essentially. If you pull it the other way around, like so, as you can see, it doesn't line up, doesn't fit. So as this isn't the original head and we don't know what age it is or anything like that, we need to measure the head bolt room basically. There's two types, there's 105 mil and 110 mil head bolts. Now, basically if you put a head bolt through, the distance stuck out the bottom should be 27 millimeters. Um, it doesn't matter what bolt you use, it's gotta be 27 mil. So as you can hopefully see, that is 27 mil exactly. Another thing you need to do is to make sure the crank is set to top dead center. So piston one and four should be at the very top. And you also need to make sure the cams are in the correct place as well. Because if the cams are say 180 degrees out, you could damage the valves tightening it up. Then just carefully place it on. It should just sit on the dowels nicely. So the cams need to be pointing upwards. That means they're timed up pretty much right obviously when we put the pulleys on we can perfect it and the crank needs to be pointing downwards so now we're going to move on to the torquing stage we're going to put the new bolts in should be 10 in total so we're going to start in the middle and work our way out and these all need to be torqued to 25 newton meters using the torque wrench So 25 newton meters, and now I'm going to do three stages of 90 degrees. So 90 degrees on each bolt, once, twice, and three times. Right. Right, so the head's now torqued up correctly. So I'm going to move on to the timing side. So first off, I just need to secure this rear timing cover. A couple of M6s here, or well, three actually. And then I could put the pulleys on. Put the belt on, time it up properly, and that'll do. Right, all tight as you can see. So this is a C20XE inlet cam in this LET engine. So it's a naturally aspirated inlet cam, and it's got another one millimetre of lift. So, if you put that in, and then retard it by seven degrees, using a vernier pulley like this, so which is basically half a tooth. That's meant to give about 50, 60 horsepower mid-range. Um, so we're going to fit this. So essentially just bolt it on like you would a normal pulley. It's already set 7 degrees, half a tooth. So it's what's bolt for tightening up. And that should make a nice little increase in power. So that's the two cam pulleys on. I now need to put the cam cover, the rock cover over the top, because that's actually got the lines where this marks up with these little slots here. So this hasn't been painted yet. I'm just sticking it on for now. It will be painted, do not worry. Right guys, so if you look here, you'll see the little slot there, little slot there. So the line here, the line here, and they've got a line up. So hopefully that's nice and clear for you. Which I think they line up really well. So now we can stick the belt on. That's another job done. So we're using a brand new Deco belt. Again, OE quality. And let's just slide it on. So again, make sure all your lines are lined up. Carefully feed your belt on. You want 
the non-tension side to be nice and tight, the tension side that can be loose. Just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to take this guide out. And then adjust the tensioner. Six mil Allen key, and you turn it in the clockwise direction. You want to get the line marked up just like that, the groove. And tighten it up. Right, now I'm going to turn the engine over. So that's been turned over about four times. All the pulleys line up nicely. However, this tension has gone a little bit slack. So I'm just going to slacken this off slightly and then just retweak it. Just like that. Then we'll turn it over again, clockwise rotation, and I think they line up just right. The crank's pointing down, cams are lined up there, and there. That, for me, looks really good. Right guys, we've got a nice tall motor timed up, turning over beautifully, so I am dead chuffed. Convenient place to stop the video. Now if you're wondering what these scrap pile of parts are next to this vehicle, there's another video about that, go and have a look. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments box below, and if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more guys, I'll see you very soon, bye bye.